Can I ask a question? I wanted to make sure that I was going to be able to use the screen share. So who's ever the hosting? Um, can You're good I, to go. I'm good to go. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, can I try it or just we'll... Of course. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going to hit it. Oh, so see, I have to go into something else, don't I? Okay. Screen share. The little green button, Jesse. Okay. No, I just hit it. I just hit it. And then find the one that you want to share on find your screen. I want. <sighs> then it didn't come up. There you go. There. It is. there. Okay. There you go. Okay. There's usually a little delay. <clears throat> All right. So stop share. Okay. Thank you. Go. Good job. <clears throat> All right. Excellent. Well, with that, let's go ahead and get started. Hi, everybody. Hey. Hey. Hey, girls. Good to see everybody. Hey. hey. You too. <laughs> and let's see. I don't see any guests, so we can just dive right in. And I am uh, going to go ahead and let Lucille take the rain and be our Toastmaster. So let's give Lucille a warm welcome. Yay, Lucille! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome everybody. Thank you for being here today on time. That's wonderful. So I have emailed to you our agenda for today and thank you by the way very much for filling in the role so it makes the job of, of the Toastmaster as well as Pat um, very easy for the week. So I appreciate that. The theme of the day is giving back, which can be in a form of giving back your time, like volunteering or giving back money to organization, or just most of the time we give, we give back with our time for most of us. And I think to me, that's the most important part. And of course, giving your time is also money wise because you're working and you're giving your time free for for the people that you want to give it to or the organization and the word of the day is human humanitarian and stacy will would you like to define that stacy yes i can do that um although it's not the agenda and it's in my email oh oh here <laughs> Yeah, so we have to read it off the email. Sorry. Uh, oh, well, it just means that you um, give back in either volunteering or money to organizations that need help. Right. It's kind of in a nutshell. In a nutshell, that's good. I, I wrote it down, but now somehow I can't find it. Yeah. Basically, that's the meaning of it. Thank you, Stacy. So we don't have any visitors right now, as I can see nothing there. Okay, so let's move on to just dive right in and would like to introduce our joke master for today. And that would be Angel. Hello everyone. Who remembers Batman, the old Batman when it was Adam West in his little tight shorts? Do you remember that little Robin? Well, my joke for today is a direct quote from one of their ancient vintage shows. They're chasing the Riddler, the Riddler dressed in his crazy outfit, and he's looking for escape. He runs up the steps of the Gotham Library. They leap out of the Batmobile and chase him up the steps. They charge in through this grand doorway, the Gotham Library, and Robin shouts, ma'am, to the librarian. And Adam West, the Batman, turns and says, shh. Robin, this is a library. So they go over and they whisper and they say to the librarian, we're chasing an important criminal man. He's wearing a pink mask, all over skin tight, bright green body suit, covered with exclamation points. Have you seen him? And the librarian lowers her glasses and says, well, Batman, I don't know. So many people come in here. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't laugh. <laughs> That's great. Uh, uh, like, I wouldn't have noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that show was full of little jokes and, and gorgeous moments. So I urge you to check it out over the weekend and enjoy some vintage TV. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Angel. 
Very nice. So if you can put your, I think you already have your functions on your, yes, perfect. Thank you. So let's dive right in to our speakers today. Our first speaker is doing his icebreaker on pathways. Is that right? I believe so. And yeah. in the, um, let's see, sorry for the um there. It will be four to six minutes. The purpose of this project is to introduce yourself to the club and learn the basic structure of a public speech. The title of his speech, you are a good speaker in small groups, but please help me welcome Charles Bradshaw. Fellow Toastmasters, it may not be a surprise to you that throughout my life, people have seen me as an outgoing and gregarious person. I've been able to make friends very easily. I have had very meaningful relationships. And oftentimes when I speak, I speak with a degree of confidence that conveys a lot of charisma. However, perceptions are not reality. In reality, when it comes to public speaking, I would get so nervous. I actually would freeze up and I wouldn't know what to do. When I was in college, I was lucky enough to become a congressional aide. And part of being a congressional aide is representing your boss all throughout the community. And we're talking rubber chicken dinners, we're talking speeches before uh, clubs, and reading from the congressional record. One of my biggest failures, I consider it a failure, was when I had to go to the USS Hornet and read from the congressional record to a Boy Scout troop about what happened on this aircraft carrier that actually collected the astronauts after the moon landing. I was so nervous that I quickly read through the beginning, summarized the middle, leaving out a lot of the key details, and then talked about the conclusion. Basically depriving everyone who was there with the experience of having you know, their congressional representative tell them about this amazing event. I moved to a different job where I was working in labor relations, working with unions, building trades, tough guys. And when we would have one-on-one -on -one meetings, we would be very, I was very effective. I was a good communicator and I got my ideas across well. However, at the larger meetings, I would get nervous and I couldn't quite always slow my brain down. I would think really fast and I don't know that I would get my point across because I seem to have to repeat myself a lot. I don't think it was because they didn't want to listen to me. I just couldn't necessarily translate, translate the, my skills to larger conversations. My supervisor at the time pulled me aside and said, Charles, you're great in small groups, but I think you should check out Toastmasters. I thought it was okay. I was like, oh yeah, Toastmasters. I'd seen the logo one year, turned to two years, turned into a dozen years later. I finally said, sure, I'm gonna go to Toastmasters and I'm gonna check it out. Largely because a lot of my company needed people who could stand up and brief installation commanders for military base commanders or other senior leaders in the military. And this responsibility was falling to me. So while I could conveniently push it off, now I had to step up. I showed up at Club 47, and that's the other club in Carlsbad on Wednesday nights. And it was great. I had a great time. However, I was observing people. I was listening to all these great speeches and I loved listening to all the great speeches. It took me about four months to join because I was deathly afraid of table topics. And then once I joined, it took me another two to three months to do my first icebreaker. 
it has taken me, it took me a long time to get started. From there, I started to get a little momentum under me because there's something about repetition. There's something about actually getting yourself out there that I didn't know about with regard to public speaking. The more you do it, the easier it got. I also joined the improv club, which was a Thursday night club held in Oceanside. And it really helped also with my ability to think on my feet and where I would normally get afraid during meetings and my brain would start racing and I couldn't get my mouth to move in sync with my thoughts, the improv club helped me to break that cycle. Finally, in 2020, COVID-19 comes and here I am at Expressions Unlimited. All communications now is virtual in Zoom. And I had no idea that my goal of initially completing my advanced communicator bronze was going to get pushed to the side. And I was going to enjoy transforming my ability to communicate from a live presence to a virtual sense. In sum, when someone invites you to Toastmasters, or when you invite someone to Toastmasters, you have no idea what kind of benefits can happen. They could happen immediately, they can happen a dozen years later, or even close to 15 years later during a pandemic. It can help to serve as a catalyst for personal and professional development. Thank you, Charles. Bear in mind Charles' objectives while when you are writing a chat to him or email him later for evaluation. A minute, please. I'll just time myself. Just a little reminder too, when, when you're evaluating, it's good to say the good things. It's also good to input some areas that they can challenge themselves in. So at least give, a, give some helpful feedback versus just, hey, good job. <laughs> Could you repeat what the object objective was, uh, please? It's an icebreaker. So the purpose of this speech is to introduce himself to the club and learn the basic structure of public speech speech. It's it's on your agenda. Just to add to Diana, the three main part is how you hear him, how his impact on you and what he can improve. Those are usually three good points. Okay, I think we are done with our one minute. Thank you, everyone. Hopefully, you're sending it to him privately in chat or email it to him later because we've been kind of getting away with it. I know I'm, I'm guilty of that myself. I haven't been sending my evaluation to the speakers. So I apologize for that. I should be more, I should be set a good example, but I failed. <laughs> Our second speaker today is doing a presentation mastery level two. And it will be five to seven minutes. The title of her speech, setting smart goals. The objectives, this project focuses on how to recognize body language used when speaking publicly and how to use gestures to enhance speech content. Her personal objectives, she wants you to notice facial expression, her pauses, reduce fil fillers, general clarity of her speech, how she maintains eye contact and less nervous. Please help me welcome our second speaker, Jesse Kiko.
Good afternoon. Thank you. Today, we're going to be talking about SMART goals. And many of you may know that this SMART is the acronyms for the type of goals and the guidelines. You have S M A R T, meaning SMART, and they all have a meaning. And right now, I'm going to put us over on the screen share so I can go through each of those with you if I can find them. There they are, and share the screen. There we go. Okay, so SMART goals, S M A R T, S stands for specific, and that means your goal should be very clear and concise. M is measurable, and that is a way for you to know how you're doing. Are you making progress along your goal? And then when you've completed it. And then A is attainable. Can you actually reach that goal? And R is relevant or reasonable. Does it really make sense with the given your situation in your environment at the time? And then time defined, is there a time limit? And quite often we know that we're more efficient and effective when we do have a little time restraint in our goals. So those are the SMART goals acronyms. And basically my other purpose besides pathways for this speech is to talk about and impart the importance of making, uh, making goals when we can make them fully congruent, 100% congruent if possible with the set of values that we have in our lives. Because everyone lives by a set of priorities from highest priorities to lowest priorities. And we call that highest values to lowest values. And what does that mean? Well, really, it, what it, all it really means is what's most important to you and what inspires you, what really makes you want to get up in the morning and go out and perform and get engaged in whatever that activity might be because it's important to you and it inspires you. This may change throughout your life a little bit. Um, and so that's okay. Things do change. And they might be very different from what somebody else's set of values are. So it's very important to get attuned to what your specific set of highest values are. Okay, having said that, I want to go back and talk about each specific acronym. The S is for specific. And as we said, it means make it clear and concise. And I always love it when we're in our highest values, creating our goals, because that is where we're going to be most responsible, we're going to be most accountable, and we're going to broaden our horizons, we're going to reach out and learn more, we're going to expand our resources, and somebody's going to say, hey, I, I like what you're doing, can you come speak for us, or can I place an order with you, or how can we work together? and then you, you gradually gain momentum and build up um, the goal that you have and even in even life goals. M for measurable, so that's specific and then measurable. The interesting thing about being measurable is not only do we know where we're at in the goal, but also we can, I don't care how big your goal is, it could be a huge worldwide goal, right? If you chunk it down into smaller and smaller increments so that we have monthly, weekly, and even daily goals and, and action steps, that's the main thing that I care about so long as you're making the goal inside your true highest values. Attainable, is it actually attainable? Somebody could come to me and say, I'd like to make a million dollars every year. Okay, well actually, that's not really a goal, that's a result of a goal. All right, and so then how do you turn that result of a goal into the actual goal? Well, you can, like a lot of accountants, they work backwards and you can go backwards and go, okay, if you wanna make a million dollars, say you're in sales and you get a thousand dollars when you make a sale, but it takes you 10 calls to make that sale. And so you need a thousand of those times a thousand dollars to make a million because a thousand times a thousand is a million but yet it takes 10 calls to make that, to make that thousand dollars. So you need to make 10,000 calls 
So, okay, well, at least we have a number, all right? We can divide that out and, and come down and figure out what the daily number of calls is that you need to make and then figure out specifically when you, uh, during the day you're gonna make those calls. And if you heard Devin's speech last week, she was talking about being authentic and also um, you know, talking to people what I interpreted in their values so that you, they can hear what you have and if you can come together and have a combination, it's a win-win. And then they are gonna be able to benefit for, for what you have to sell. And then maybe you are now making two sales per 10 calls, and then you only have to make half as many phone calls. So that's um, talking about attainable. We can make it attainable so long as you're in your highest values. Relevant, is it actually relevant? Your neighbor might have a beautiful garden. And if you said, oh, I'm gonna have a goal of a beautiful garden. But you know what? If you've never really gardened or enjoyed gardening, it might not be the right goal for you. And but yeah, I mean, you're willing to try, but just be aware of borrowing other people's goals. And then the time restraint. Um, and if you know, I have an example of that. My daughter was down here on Wednesday, we had to go through a bunch of photo boxes, and we had a great time, but we only had four hours and we hit it hard. And when she left, I came back up to my apartment, and I was so grateful that we had had that time, but I was also grateful that we had the time restraint because we got a lot done in a short amount of time. So I just want to say in closing that you are unique and you are so magnificent in who you are. So value who you are and value your highest values and your highest priorities and make your, your goals inside uh, congruent with your highest values because you'll be glad you did. And you know what? Stay smart. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. One minute, please, for evaluation. Bear in mind, her objectives is about body language and how to use the, his, her gesture to enhance the speech. All right, I think everybody's one minute's lapse already. May I have a timer's report, please, uh, Pat, for our speakers? Can't hear you. They both qualified. Thank you, Pat. Would you please vote for the best speaker? It will, you need to uh, private email it to, or chat to, Deanna. While you're doing that, I'm going to introduce our general evaluator who will introduce the evaluator for the speakers today. And that would be Devin. Hi, Devin. Hi, thank you. So at this time, I'd like to welcome Anita, who will be evaluating Charles' speech, again with the focus on his goal for this project, which was to introduce himself to the club and practice organizing a speech. So please help me welcome Anita. Thank you, Devin. I always love to hear Charles speak because he always speaks with kind of a conviction. He speaks at a good pace and usually has very good eye contact and and uh, I 
I love the subjects that I've heard him speak on. And with that in mind, I have to, I, I don't know how he remembers his speech without looking at notes, but I have to look at notes for my evaluation. I like the way that you looked at the camera, Charles. You were looking at the camera most of the whole time. You had good eye contact and you used gestures during your speech that were appropriate with the speech. But it, it, it um, gives a little so something extra, especially virtually where we don't see the whole body. We just see the top. Uh, I thought it was a good pace and um, you knew what to say. You had a good voice variation. Uh, there were a couple of times where you kind of spoke under your breath, and I couldn't quite understand what you were saying. So just be careful on that. And um, you had a great conclusion, and I enjoyed it very much. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. So now we'll welcome Jerry, who will be evaluating Jesse. And again, her objective was body language, gestures, and then also her personal goals of being more confident and present. So please help me. Thank you, on. Devin. Okay. Uh, Jesse, a great, great speech. I like the uh, acronym that you used. I like the organization of it. The visual aid was great, being able to see the, uh, the words written out. I thought your use of gestures were good. You really tried to use some hand gestures. And I know it's hard because like your hands are below you, but you raised them up, which was nice to see. And then uh, you had good eye contact. I thought the, uh, you know, your eye contact was good. It didn't look like you were reading or anything like that. Uh, your conclusion was very nice. I thought you had a good conclusion at the end, had a strong, you know, finish to it. You went through each, uh, each of the uh, different words and gave examples of, of different types of goals or, you know, how, how these play out for goals. Like if you have a certain amount of time uh, work, they have an expression, uh, work expands to the time allotted. And I think you kind of covered that in your, in that one aspect of it. But if you have all day to do something, it takes all day. Uh, so I thought that was good. Uh, I thought really uh, all in all, it was very well organized, the gestures, the eye contact, the way you look on the screen, because, they don't mention that in your evaluation, but your screen appearance is good. You have some flowers behind you. Your lighting is good. Uh, so I think that all looks good. Plus you're, you know, dressed appropriately and all that. So I think that's, that's, that's a plus. <laughs> but uh, I, the only thing I would say maybe is just uh, step up the level of enthusiasm for goals. And I tell this basically to everybody, but enthusiasm is what really makes great speeches and you can't be over enthusiastic. I think that's something that, uh, helps people to get excited if you're excited, but you had it, you know, it was a decent level that you had there. So all in all, I thought it was a great speech. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Jerry. And with that, we'll turn it back over to Lucille. Thank you, Devin. Pat, did you time the evaluators? Yes. And how was it? They both qualified. Thank you so much. Now you may, do we vote on the evaluators? We, we kind of get away with it, but I think we should vote for the evaluators. So please, yes. please chat, um, chat your votes to Deanna for the best evaluator. Both of them qualified. Thank you. And now the next section of our meeting which is the table topics today, theme, giving back. And I wanna give a quote for that. Only a life lived for others is life worthwhile by Albert Einstein. And being in Toastmaster, we volunteer. So this is, I love this theme. And it's actually Stacy who, who picked that one because of the word of the day and it's humanitarian. So I'd like to introduce our table topic master for today. She has great topics for us and it will be fun. Please help me welcome Stacy. Thank you very much, Madam Master. This is one of my favorite roles, of course. It's very creative and I love, I love having the questions um, ready. 
So I am looking at the email and it, the word of the day is humanitarian. So please use it when you uh, answer my question. And it means having concern for or helping to improve the welfare and happiness of people. And I'm not going to read all of them because it takes too long, but I've often heard in order to receive, you must first give. And I heard that from Rob Proctor, if any of you know who he is. That began my path many years ago of volunteering and charity work. For starters, 14 years ago, I became a volunteer for the Oceanside Humane Society and started walking dogs and taking care of cats. I did it for about a year and I think that was as long as I could stand it. Um, it was just really painful to see these animals, you know, in cages and just, it was rough. And then I got scratched by a cat and had to go to the emergency room. Um, but other than that, it was very rewarding. Then I joined Voices for Children and became a court appointed special advocate for a child in the foster care system. Eventually during that time, I, over 14 years, I spent time with about five different kids. And at first it seemed like an arduous task, but it evolved into something that I really loved, period. I mean, it was, um, sorry, I was talking to my phone earlier and I want to inject punctuation. <laughs> it gets to be a habit. So presently what I'm doing is I'm helping at Bread of Life in Oceanside. If you know what that is, we sometimes get asked to prepare a meal for the homeless. So I do that about once a month with a group of ladies that I work with. So that's my history of giving back. So I'm going, going to start with these questions. And I don't know how many people we have here have small children other than Charles. Does anyone else have small children? Um, Lisa, I don't know, yours are probably, Paul, yours are growing up. I'll just go ahead and ask it anyway. I'm not a parent of a young child, but I've noticed that volunteering, volunteering is being taught more in the schools today. If young children or even grandchildren, are you teaching them how to give back? Uh, how about Paul? Thank you for that table topics. I think that from a humanitarian perspective, as a parent, I've done a pretty poor job. I've I do give back myself. I give back in tithe to my church, which I also give to Bread of Life, which you mentioned, Stacy. And there's a couple other organizations, Samaritan's Purse. I don't know if you know that one, but they are a really great organization. For example, during COVID-19, they set up some temporary hospitals in Central Park in New York City. So they have an organization that not only does ministry, but also medical and food and all that kind of stuff. But as far as myself, I think that in, in, in parting for my kids, I think I've done a pretty poor job. I've led by example in terms of giving money and a little bit of my time, but I really haven't instilled the value of being a volunteer and giving back. The other day we had a quick chat about uh, tithing for the kids when they get some babysitting money. And I said, hey, it's up to you. You don't have to give back. But if you want to, you can. And they kind of looked at me and said, no, nah, I don't know if that's for us yet. So I think there's a lot of room for improvement for me in terms of teaching my kids and it's not too late. Thank you, Paul, for your honesty, your vulnerability and uh, actually admitting, you know, how, what you need to improve on. I love that. We all have stuff to improve on. So my second question, I believe I'm going to ask Megan. Megan, are you ready for this? Some people give, like to give back by being a philanthropist. Of course, you have to have money to do that. Do you see yourself donating money in the future or possibly putting it into your will after you die to have it donated to some charitable organization? You ready for that? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, I was sort of just thinking about, I was writing a paper beforehand um, for my next thing that I have to do at one. Um, but it's about brain injury. And I feel that 
after um, anyone with a TBI has to go spend all that they have to spend through recuperation, that I would be surprised if anyone has any money left. And I think that if they do, then all the more to them, but that is good. Um, that is good, and like you said, good, better to uh, better to give than to receive. And I do, I agree with that, but uh, I'm sort of like Paul, but not like Paul, I'm worse. I do not, I mean, I, I feel that if I work for it, I got it. <laughs> but I know that that is really bad and I'm trying to change. I really am. And through, through um, Tommy, I think that I am, we both as a couple are changing and we do donate to Bread of Life um, also, but I think that, I don't know, I am, I would donate more or put it in my will if I had any left. Thanks. <laughs> <I've done. laughs> so would you say you're a humanitarian? Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, okay. It's okay. Yeah. Yes, I'm a humanitarian. <laughs> I think it's kind of hard to see the word of the day because I, I had to scroll down to see who was holding it up. I, um, yes, I, so maybe that was part of it. That's okay. How about Pat? Sorry. Pat, um, how about adopting a child in another country so that they are fed? And I don't mean that you're adopting them into your home. I'm saying you ad adopt the ability to donate to a child's ability to eat on a daily basis. And I've heard people do that, but it's not that expensive. It, you know, food is not as expensive in other places as it is here. And it could cost, I don't know, $25 a month or $40 a month, something like that. So it's another way of giving back and the cost is very small and possibly affordable. So Pat, is that something that you would consider? Don't forget to unmute. Thanks for the question. I'll uh, I'll time myself, I guess. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I've always seen those commercials about UNICEF or different organizations that help kids or refugees, and I give money here and there, and you know, to Amnesty International or UNICEF, and yeah, I I would be. Uh, willing to support like kids that are in you know pretty bad conditions you know adopting um actually uh me and my girlfriend were you know we've been talking a little about uh you know we're, we're a little older so it's like uh, i don't know if she can have kids but uh um you know we'd be willing to adopt like at some point like a kid of our own so we're that's um something I would be willing to do or think about. So, thanks. Thank you, Pat. That's wonderful. How about Lisa? I have a great question for you. What about using your speaking skills to influence others to donate their time and money to good, to good causes? Wow, well, thank you for that question, Stacey. We as Toastmasters have such an important and great opportunity to be humanitarians for organizations to serve in that role where we are able to donate our time as speakers and then maybe our money. I feel like, well, that was one of my speeches I gave most recently was for Compassion International. I do sponsor two girls every month and it has enabled them, I believe, to have a much better quality of life. So for me, giving that speech where I encourage all of you 
to consider joining an organization like Compassion International or whatever your, your cause is, be it Amnesty, UNICEF, I think there's another one, Child United. I used to sponsor children with World Vision. So yeah, I think that we should use our God-given talents, whether it be speaking, giving, I believe in the Bible, well, I know, we're all given certain talents and abilities, and that could be as a speaker, it could be as an administrator, it could be as somebody who provides care when needed, compassion, the gift of hospitality, some people have the gift of singing, of writing. So if we have the gift of speaking and we can use that to encourage others toward greatness and giving, I think we should do so. Thank you so much, Lisa. That was great. Mm -hmm. I want to try to get to everybody if I can. So I'm going to ask Devin a question. Devin, we all know who Mother Teresa was and is a well-known figure who donated her life to feeding the poor. That's a huge sacrifice for most people, but maybe on a smaller scale, um, is there any ideas that you might have that you could share that we could do? Thank you. Yeah, I will not try to claim I'm anywhere in any way, shape or form the humanitarian that Mother Teresa is. Um, I too, uh, I do give to charitable organizations. I wish I could say I did more volunteering. Right now, I don't have a lot of extra free time in my schedule, but that would be something I'd want to, to do more of in the future. But in the meantime, I mean, I, I do save the children for your last question about that. Um, my, my own church as well. And just because of the COVID stuff, I know I'm still working and I was reading so many stories about people out of work and they couldn't feed their families. I was just feeling so guilty. And then like the stimulus check came and all of that stuff. So I just started looking up local food banks and things like that because I wanted to help our own community. Um, Cause I know there's a lot of large organizations but it's hard to know where the money's going. So I did a lot of research on, you know, San Diego and North County based you know, food banks and, you know, tried to send as much money, you know, as I could to that just for the immediate needs that I was seeing. Um, so it, I think anything we can do, even if it's a small amount, um, is helpful. Awesome. Thank you. Very good. Okay. Deanna, are you ready? I'll, I'll defer to Debbie. You'll I'll defer to Debbie. To, okay, yeah. let's, let's uh, have Debbie. Are you ready? Debbie, some folks like to become missionaries and go to other countries to serve, possibly third world countries. Have you ever done this? Or have you ever thought about doing this? Is this something that if you were, you know, for me, if I was younger, I might, but um, I'm not going to do it at this point in my life, but it's still a very, uh, very good thing to do. What do you say, Deb? I think that's an amazing and very humanitarian thing to do. It's funny because when I was younger, I was so unadventurous that honestly, I would have never considered something like that. To, I feel like I would consider it more today than I would have, you know, when I was maybe at the, the better age to do it. But, you know, this whole conversation is reminding me, I just finished this very interesting class online called The Science of Wellbeing, and it's all about happiness. And what's very interesting is that when we give to other people, it actually contributes to our happiness. It actually makes us happier, better people. And so I, I think that there's a pattern here that you can see with you know this whole group. I think that this is a, like a group of very happy giving people and, and it really does all fit together. You know, it's, um, they have really interesting tests where they'll have people like they'll give them $5 and they'll either have to give it to someone or spend it on themselves within by the end of the day and then they'll test their happiness at different times and they'll ping them and you know evaluate them and it's very interesting because it's it's really not only good for the people we're helping but it's good for us thank you nice that's a great answer thank you so much i have one more question and um if 
Deanna doesn't want to do it. Um, let's see who else. Just um, the speakers and evaluators. So that's why I'm kind of skipping you guys, but you're welcome to answer this one if you want to. I will read it and let's see who volunteers. How's that? Oh, I haven't asked Lucille. She just popped up. Lucille. No, Deanna, Deanna hasn't talked. Deanna, okay. Maybe you have a skill for entertainment and that would be best used say at a children's hospital or a shelter or maybe even a nursing home or somewhere where um, people need to be uplifted. If you had a talent, what would it be and uh, where would you go? Thanks, Stacy. <laughs> That's actually a really good question and I can tell you, I personally don't have a specific talent that I can think of but I would bring my dog to a nursing home, which I've done before. And my dog is a certified therapy dog. And the joy that you see from these seniors that are staying in their little, you know, the little area, they're not going out. They're basically either bedridden or they're, there aren't that many visitors but to see how excited they are when they see my dog, it is so fulfilling. And they remember my dog's name before they remember me, which is fantastic because that just shows me how impactful the dog can be to their lives. And I can see that they look forward to the visits and they're just so happy to see the dog and they start talking about how it was when they had their own animals and it just adds so much life to the conversation and you can just tell that they are very joyful to to see an animal and be able to pet it and to hold cool. it and so thanks great answer great answer i did miss one other person i missed angel so are there any of these seven questions that you wanted to answer when you heard them that you might want to speak Who up me? on any of these. You can speak up on Lord, how's that? Give you well, full I has, was raised to be humanitarian. My parents always helped us every year to go through our toys and clothes and take them to what we used to call the less fortunate. And also we collected and went with our parents to collect money. And generally the charities that I've always supported were the same ones that they support, which was animals, in need, young children and the blind. So those are still the ones that matter the most, I think, in my heart. Um, when I heard Devon mention Save the Children, I thought, ah, that's probably totally above board. I should check that one out again because I have been ripped off time and time and time again. So I do urge you, I've known people personally who have wonderful humanitarian uh, businesses and I've been part of huge conferences, I've been part of raising money and a lot of them, even the ones I knew, what can I say? Legally, you only have to give 10% of what you earn when you're a charity to the charity. And I used to give money to World Vision only to find that that was a fake and that they were not giving money to children. Uh, so the only one I've, I've donated and, and been part of a lot of them, the only one that I haven't found was cheating was Oxfam. And I used to go to events to raise awareness because Oxfam isn't that well known here in the US. It's more like UNICEF type of a of a concern that's really, really big. And so I think it's vital, I think we need to do it. And especially now there are children who won't be educated because of the COVID-19, they won't be getting what they need at home to help them when they're young, to build the skills and abilities and, and confidence that they're gonna need. Um, there's a lot of hungry, there's a lot of hungry all over the world, there's a lot of war. Don't get me started, we should. We should give what, anything with our time and effort that we can and our money. But please check, check and check again that you're not giving your money to the wrong place and that the people who deserve and need the help are gonna be getting it. And that's my big lesson that I've learned that you might not be. So keep at it, <laughs> keep going and good luck. Awesome, thank you so much. These were all great answers. Everyone did a wonderful job. And I'm going to turn the meeting back over to Lucille. Thank you, Stacy. Excellent questions. Excellent great questions. Answers. Great, great questions. Thank you for that very creative 
uh, questions that you have asked. I would like to now um, give, ask Pat for timer's report, please, for the table topic speakers. Yes, everyone qualified. There was Paul, Megan, Pat, Lisa, Jesse, Deanna, and... Uh, Not Angel. Jesse. Not Jesse. Oh. Debbie. Maybe. Debbie. My bad. Sorry. That's okay. Okay. Thank you, Pat. Mm -hmm. How about the grammarians report who used the word of the day for now? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the ones who, the speakers who used the word of the day, Paul used it, I used it, Devin, Debbie, and Angel. I did not hear the word of the day used by Megan, Pat, and Deanna. Is that correct? Am I wrong? I think you're right. Okay, thank you. So the people that qualified for time as well as the use of the word of the day are Paul, Lisa, Devin, Debbie, and Deanna. So please take your vote and, and send it over to chat to Deanna. About. I think you meant Angel, not Deanna. I don't think you yeah. All right. While you're doing that, sending your votes to Deanna, may I have the accounters report, please, Paul? You betcha. Lucille, I caught one um. Thank you. Charles, one ah. Uh. Two pregnant ands. Jesse, one um and two ands. Anita, nothing. Jerry, six ahs, one so and one you know. Stacy, three ums, two ands, and one you know. I had a couple of verbal stuff. I even caught myself as I was speaking. I'm like, oh, doggone it. So, just so right there. Megan, one um, two you knows. Pat, one um, three ahs, one you know. Lisa, nothing. Devin, nothing. Deanna, you had a Xerox. You said two, two. Debbie, one um, and Angel, nothing. Thank you, Paul. Good job, everybody. Now, may I call on our grammarian, Lisa, for your report, please. Thank you. Well, Lucille, I really like how you, I haven't heard this in a long time. You reminded us how, not a grammarian thing, but I like that you reminded us to evaluate on how we hear the speaker, our impact of the speaker on us, and what can be improved upon. I haven't heard that in a long time and it was refreshing when we had given an evaluation. Jesse, I loved the word congruent. I haven't heard that in a long time. Stacy, I like the word of the day, humanitarian. That's an excellent word. Paul used instilled. And I think that was it. Thank you so much. Now let's have our General evaluator, Devin, will evaluate how we did today. Devin. Thank you. Excellent job. It's clear that Lucille is our seasoned member. She did everything like by the book, starting with sending out a perfect agenda in advance of the meeting. So I know we can't have the printed ones, but it is nice to have, still have the agenda and know it included the objectives for the speakers, which helps us write our evaluations. That was wonderfully done. We started on time. Even better, almost everybody was here five minutes before, which allowed us to you know, practice things like the screen share and things like that that we can do in advance of the meeting that helps the rest run smoothly. So that was all excellent. Both of our, our evaluators did an excellent job of addressing both the objective of the speech, but also giving some additional um, praise and feedback and things that the speakers could work on. So well done all around. Thank you, Devin. Thanks so much. And I have the results. Hmm. Very nice. Let's start off with our table topics. Winner, best table topics today, Debbie, 
Yay, ribbon. I should just present a ribbon. I have <laughs> Our speakers. Oh, let, let me do the speakers last. Evaluators. We have a tie. Congratulations to both of you, Anita and Jerry. And drum roll for our speaker, best speakers today. Another tie. Congratulations to uh, both of you. <laughs> you did such a beautiful uh, job. Excellent job. And that concludes my part for today's meeting. And I would like to turn it over now to our president, Deanna. All right, awesome job, everybody. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen. And well, actually, before I even do that, I wanna find out, is everybody getting their Toastmaster emails from Toastmasters directly? Is there anybody that has not been getting their emails? Megan, look like, okay. They, there should be quite a few emails lately that has been talking about the Toastmasters Leadership uh, Institute. And it's gonna be a series of three days starting tomorrow is their first series. And I just wanna see if I can share the screen with you. Let's see. Okay, whoops. I just had it. Okay, this here. Can you can can you guys can see you, that? Can you make it bigger? Uh, let's see. Oh, I see. Yeah. We can see it. Okay. All right, good. So tomorrow it goes from eight to one and they'll have breaks. This is a nice agenda, but you can see there's a variety of topics. You've got this one. I can, I, I can't really read it too well. Let's see. Okay. The five P's of peak performance preparation and then you've got improving your speaking and leading. Pathways Forum, building a healthy team. So that's coming up. And then, and then they have day two, which will be Wednesday evening from six to eight. And then the next Saturday from eight to 12. And you just have to register right here. And that way you get your Zoom link. But it's a great way for you to watch these seasoned speakers. You wanna improve your speaking skills really good ways to watch people do watch those that are that are very good speakers and be able to learn from them in addition to all the good information that they're going to be passing on all right so i'm going to go into our sign up sheet and please if you guys can say your name as you're volunteering that way i don't have to ask who's who's volunteering for which role uh, we have next week table topics master. We got Angel. We got one speaker. We have we have Toastmaster spots available and speakers available. And also, you can volunteer for a future uh, role, not just next week, but also maybe August. But if you guys can chime in, that'd be great. Anybody for Toastmaster? Devin, I, I can take it. Okay, Devin, cool. I have and a, how about? Oh, sorry. Where's Anita? Go ahead, you, oh, there's Anita. I haven't seen Anita, the, the, the Toastmaster. Just, but she's the speaker. She's a speaker. Oh, she is a speaker. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Anita could be Toastmaster in the future if you want to pick a date, Anita. Okay, how about speaker number two? I can do a speech. Awesome. Is that you, Pat? Yeah. Okay, so for next week, we got Pat. 
Who wants to evaluate Pat? It's on the 24th. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll do the evaluation, Jerry. Cool. Thanks, Jerry. All right. I'll counter. I can be GE. Let's oh. see. Lucille. Awesome. I'll counter. Okay, Debbie, we'll do the I'll counter. Awesome, Debbie. Joke master. Chat monitor, watcher. Come on, guys. Or for a future week, too. Deanna, I have a 10 to 12 minutes. It's part, it's not part of the, it is still sort of a wrap up for the presentation mastery, even though I finished level five. It's just a like a ref reflect on your journey with the carbs to pathway, but it's a long one, but I can make it short. I can make it eight to 10. If you want to, you want to do it uh, seven? Not on July 31st. Uh, well, that's going to be a long one. We have a speaker. I don't want to cut, cut on yours. Yeah. I, let's put you on there. That's fine. Huh? That's fine. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, stop sharing so I can see everybody's faces. <laughs> I can't see people's faces when I when I'm in the screen sharing. Okay, fantastic. Any any? Uh, I am so sorry. Can I uh, not be grammarian next week? I don't sure. think I'll, I'll be able to do that. And secretary, I can't. It's too hard for me to keep notes of everything. Not a not a problem. All right, thanks. If anybody wants grammarian, chi chime in. Let me know. And I had to say goodbye to everyone. I have another meeting at one. Okay. All right. All right. Well, on that note, everybody have yourself a great weekend. Good to see everybody. Bye. 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 Good job, everybody. Good See you next week.